what's going to be really disheartening is Winter All Sword to save me, and next week I'm just going to die because I take a lethal number of hits fighting some fangs. <laughs> That's the world. First epilogue goes, once we get our blood test done and everything, we had talked at the end of last session about getting that demon out of the trunk, which thankfully we didn't. We didn't have time because I had a seizure. We are still going to do that. We're going to lock him up in a safe house, probably a hunter-run storage center. I want to get uh, one of those. I want to get a ground unit when we store him so that I can uh, bust up the concrete in one spot, dig a hole into the ground, and set up one of those condenser units that condenses water and then draws it up and connect it. And I'm going to use holy water in the humidifier. Okay. And have it running 24-7 with this demon. And while he's double trapped to a chair. And what is your end game? Just to torture the demon? Yeah. I have several other tortures planned. Like, <laughs> you're just so happy that he broke on the waterboarding. I had <laughs> worse things. I may, I, may, I may be devaluing you here because I'm putting him into a 24-hour torture room. Oh, no, no, no. No, no. No, that's still puppies and kittens. <laughs> What's coming next? Torture set. I want him to have, like, full body heartburn 24-7 while we're gone. Someone else who watched and enjoyed it. Keep coming back. And I won't even go that far. If you just watch, keep coming back. <laughs> <laughs> His barrier of entry is far lower than mine. I don't care if you enjoyed it. <laughs> Gerald feels much better. You feel like you've been awake for the first time in about a week, so that coma was very restful. Uh, Tiffany, defend yeah. the five stat points that you have already assumed that you deserve. Tell us about your character. Defend it? You are so harsh. You get harsh mistress. You get nothing. <laughs> you lose. Good day, man. Oh, whatever. It's <laughs> a good day. <laughs> Thanks, I have God. had a good day. Thanks. <laughs> so tell, tell us about uh, Megan, Megan Carter. All right. Megan is a punk kid. 18, mostly so she doesn't end up as a uh, ward of the state. Military brat. Parents were military, both mother and father. Youngest of four, all brothers. Um, Still living? She, Any of them? Oh, heavens no. <laughs> okay. She got into hunting because her family was killed by vampires. Having grown up with, uh, with the military training, she was living on base when it happened. She fought back. She managed to kill the vampires, but not before the rest of her family was killed. And rather than have to deal with the fallout, she decided to take what weapons she could and run. She is the youngest of four children. She only had older brothers. So they beat the shit out of her all the time. Oh yeah, it was, it was a very, you know, sink or swim kind of family. She picked up a lot of, a lot of being scrappy mm -hmm. from just having to hold her own against her brothers. The combat in particular, of course, with both parents in the military, she's going to be trained how to use firearms. She has a, a real hate on for vampires, but anything that is supernatural that is uh, causing trouble, she doesn't like it. Um, anything else before I, I roll out the opening cinematic? Go nuts. Go nuts, all right. Interstate 80 in Pennsylvania was a big fat mess. Rolled over gravel haulers, 12 car pileup, multiple injuries and fatalities. Traffic was backed up for miles. Joseph had spent the last 20 minutes in his car with his son, creeping up on the first exit they could find, Highway 68. Sure, it was a little slow going, but that didn't matter. It had been so long since he'd had such a good time with his son that he didn't mind the extra time in the car with him. Hey, Devin, hungry? Yeah, just uh, no more fast food, okay? Joseph laughed and pulled into a diner in some small town called Sligo. Can we get dessert too, Dad? Devin was having the best time of his life. It had been a long time since his mom had let Joseph anywhere near him. She was too busy drinking or sleeping around to care much about anything besides making sure he never got to see his dad. Anything you want. I'm getting the steak. I hope it's good. Turns out it was Joseph's lucky day. The waitress knew of a good route north that would get them around the traffic and back onto the highway. Two pieces of cake and a napkin drawn map later, they were on their way. The sun was starting to set and the light was just perfect to be right in Joseph's eyes. Still, he was making good time through the open farm country. Dad, look out, Devin shouted as a deer bolted from out of nowhere from the inside of the tree line along the road. 
Joseph managed to swerve his car around the dough just in time, but he wasn't prepared for the two bucks who came charging out right after. He gave the wheel one final pull in desperation before clipping one of the deer and losing control of the car. Joseph's car bounced off the road and smacked front first into a telephone pole at 40 miles an hour. The last thing Joseph remembered before everything went black was his head hitting the steering wheel. A few hours later, Joseph woke up. His head hurt. This wasn't his first concussion, and he dismissed the dizziness and nausea. Panic set in. Devin, are you okay? He said before looking over. He then realized that Devin was gone. He quickly forgot about his headache. Devin! Devin! He shouted as he scrambled out of the car to look for his son. Devin! He saw blood on the ground outside at the other side of the car and a path of broken branches and weeds leading away and towards a distant farmhouse. Joseph checked his phone. Damn it! He said, and he saw that he still had no reception. Devin must have gone for help since he couldn't call anyone. It was dark, but the flashlight on his phone was more than enough to follow his trail. After what felt like a long time of stumbling through the darkness, Joseph heard a loud and panicked stream cut through the darkness. It was far away, but there was no doubt in his mind whose voice it was. Devin, where are you? He scrambled as he ran. Quickly thereafter, the screams died out, and Joseph ran even harder. Out of breath, Joseph almost tripped over a freshly dug, shallow hole in the ground. It was so dark that he thought he saw something at the bottom of the hole. His heart jumped into his throat at what he feared, and he feared the worst. On his hands and knees, Joseph turned the form over and suddenly was looking right into the cold, dead eyes of his only son. No, 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 no! Joseph shook the body of his dead son and pointed the flashlight down at his hands. They were covered in blood. His son had been ripped open before someone tried to bury him. Joseph was snapped out of the daze he was in when he heard a shotgun cocking not too far away. Put your hands up, you sick son of a bitch. No, no, you don't understand. I should kill you for what you did to my wife. The man, apparently the farm owner, gestured angrily with the shotgun. Joseph had no idea what the man was talking about, but he looked to be just a breath away from pulling the trigger, trigger so he kept his mouth shut and very slowly put his hands in the air. The gun was shaking in his hands as he pulled a strange looking phone from his pocket and dialed 911. Yeah, by the farm on 58. Get someone here quick. I got the son of a bitch who killed my wife. The sick fucker came back and killed some kid too. I didn't. Joseph's protest was cut off by the echoing blast of a shotgun. It mostly meant to miss a little bit on his left. The angry farmer quit quickly recocked the gun. I swear to fuck I won't miss next time. I swear to fuck I won't miss. You shut up. Joseph got the hint. He wanted to say everything, but said nothing, and was later arrested for the murder of his son Devin and some woman named Janice, who just so happened to have been killed a few days before when he was driving through to pick up his son in the first place. Hmm. Well, this one's just people being awful. This isn't our thing. Um, Gerald. Your phone rings. Ring, ring, yeah, ring. Yeah, I answered it. Yeah, it's uh, it's Peter. Hey, uh, Gerald. Yeah. I don't know if this is what I think it is, but uh, I think you're gonna want to head to Pennsylvania. I'm in California. Okay. <laughs> why? <laughs> we had somebody torn up, uh, and then another one a couple days later. Their hearts were missing. Oh, great. Send all of the information you have to that my uh, my electronic mail, and I will have. <laughs> Eric, look at it. You get uh, longitude and latitude. Okay. Which is standard procedure. It's out of the hospital, time to drive all the way across the country. You pretty much had to burn one of your identities, Gerald, because of your uh, hospital stay. Uh, it was very public. You had to use a lot of information that now is going to get tied up into a lot of insurance bullcrap. Uh, one of the downsides is you're going to be a little bit short on funds. So unless you want to tell Eric uh, he's got to pay for gas in your Lincoln continent, which is not fuel economic. Yeah. He spent too much money and time on this car to ditch it for something that's better for the job. And he just loves that car. So he'll spend too much money over the years getting it to be a better version of his shitty car than buying a better car. What do you do? You, you got no money. How do you uh, how do you fix that? Well, it's going to take us a couple of days to get across country to right. get there, which means we are going to have to stop at some point and yeah. rest. And during that break time in driving, I just the first thing I'm going to do is just hit up bars and play pool okay. or cards. I'll sure. play darts too. I'm not as good at darts, but I might be able to talk my way into something. Side bets and whatnot. Betting with people on what's going to happen on TV. 
You make your way into some shitty bar in Nevada. There's there's a pool game going on. The guy's had a few drinks. He looks like, uh, you know, he might be an easy mark. So you start chatting the guy out. Oh yeah, I used to, uh, used to play a little pool in my day. Well, he's gonna be good. Um, okay. so, but you're good. So are you good enough to hustle the hustler? <laughs> Well, I cheat. I don't cheat at the game itself. That's novice as hell. Right. I buy him drinks. I invest in a larger profit going forward. I double down on my risk. Cheap beers into both of us. I'm more likely to be able to play pool well drunk than he is. Well, it's your lucky day. Yeah, no, he's still yep. drunk. He says, if you're drinking, I'm buying. Wait, no, you're giving me drinks. Nope, you've got this round. Okay, you okay. I got this one. But if you're buying, I'm drinking. Yes. You can see his pocket is kind of bulging. Pocket. And uh, not in that way, in the way that makes you excited, Gerald. That big bulge <laughs> in his pants um, that is, is, is very oversized is actually pool winnings. So you can't Which, stop staring at his bulge. You want it. I want that bulge in my pants. <laughs> I'm jealous. <laughs> so, I, I have bulge envy. He does the whole the whole con thing, and you're conning him too. Uh, the biggest difference is, is that you realize he's a con man before he realizes you're one. So he lets you win the first game, and he acts a little bit drunk. The problem <laughs> is, is that you're so easy going, you're so disarming, you're so non-threatening, so pathetic <laughs> that this guy doesn't even think twice before drinking more than an experienced con man would. So he's gonna be at a negative. Up comes the moment of truth. Well, I probably shouldn't, but uh, what do you say we make the next game interesting? Say 10 bucks a ball. All right. I think I can swing that. And you, you've won some chump change up to this point. Like you're up about 30 bucks. But okay. those were the, the just for fun, build your confidence games where he misses some easy shots. Mm -hmm. uh, he gets close, but he, oh, just missed it, bounced off the rim. There's a whole level to this. Like, obviously we're drinking, we're both con guys. So we both get food or, you know, something to snack on this sort of yeah. a later boost. But I have trained myself to eat the nastiest bar food and the worst flavor of chips and stuff they have available just on the off chance that they won't want any. You, you weren't playing your best. Like, it's been a while since yeah. you hustled pool. I guess being in a coma will take a little bit of the spring out of your coma. step. But you see this guy is uh, struggling. Like, he's got that look on his face where he was trying hard. And he's missing shots that he knows he should be making. But since you're playing equally bad, he's still playing it off. He still thinks he's got your number. So, oh no, no, we, we you, you pretty much broke even for the game. No, we gotta do that again. I can't let it end like that. I'm going to beat you. I can feel it. My luck's turning around. And uh, All right. Well, we'll uh, why don't we make it 15? Yeah, you, you're damn right it's 15. Bartender <laughs> shots. Oh, you run the table. You remember Family Matters? Where, where Urkel loses all of his money to the pool shark, and then mm. Carl has to come in and save him. Never saw that one, and actually. And then, then uh, the grandma has to come in and save Carl oh. with her crazy pool shots. Like, that is the level of pool sharking that you're able to pull off here. You need like the baby powder and like the triple bank shots and uh, it's it's like something out of a movie. So best game of best game of your life really. And, Sink the uh, eight ball. Did I do that? Uh -huh. I did. <laughs> Carl of Duty, black cops. Carl, <laughs> Carl of Duty black cops. So you got a couple hundred bucks. The guy's still got some money in his pocket. He's not happy but he knows what happened now and he's he's not mad at you because he's not only himself to blame he knew he drank too much he got cocky he broke one of the first rules of uh of, of running a hustle and he drank his own kool-aid so i buy him one final drink before i leave and pat him on the back yeah lots of luck asshole <laughs> <laughs> and uh i take some of my winnings and i just straight up just hand it over to eric like here you go i take them no yeah, we're driving it's getting late probably the second day and uh, haven't said anything up to this point, but as we're getting closer to the job, I'm gonna look over to Eric. I do appreciate what you did back there. Don't mention it. No, well, I did already. I've been thinking about it since I woke up, and that's a hell of a risk to take for someone you don't know that well. Another hunter or not, so I owe you one. You owe me several. I did help set your mother up. Yeah, you found a weird guy in bumfuck wherever. Not that I, I'm not saying that I don't appreciate it, but. That's exactly what you need in that situation. It is. A weird guy who's connected. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. No need to overthink it. Was the uh, right choice to make. Uh, you got good contacts. That works solid. Besides that whole crisp with Millie thing, you've been uh, reliable, and that's uh, fairly common for uh, hunters. Usually, they're one extreme or the other. It's better to find someone balanced or someone who situates for skill. And I think we work really well together. If uh, I left you to die, 
in that hospital room and uh, I'd be on the road again by myself. I'd likely bump into someone else, team up, they suck, to get us both killed. You know? It was more calculated risk than anything else. I can appreciate that. So did you get anything good out of that electronic <laughs> mail? <laughs> good is a relative term. You got a longitude and <laughs> latitude. So. Drive across the country, check it out. There are no hunters closer. We're in California. Heart's missing is why he called you. Yeah, not happy Where about that. Uh, Megan, you get a text message. It just says longitude and latitude, don't get killed. Eric and Gerald, you're able to travel cross country. There's a little bit of pool hustling here and there. Maybe you win a game of cards. Eric, I don't know how much of that you've been around, but Gerald's pretty impressive when it comes to scamming folks. There's the whole FBI impersonation, or I'm CDC, or I'm whatever, but to watch this guy put on a different hat and be able to just approach perfect strangers and take all of their money in a way that doesn't leave them with black eyes is is pretty impressive. He's very good at this. You make it to the town of Sligo, Pennsylvania. It's been a couple days since the murder happened. It's, it's a small town. It's pretty much got uh, law enforcement, food and lodging, and that's about it. And then you've got the farmer's property who was actually there for the murder. I don't know. Eric, you want to take lead on this one? I think we should talk to the dude that was locked up for the murder. Okay. Uh, you make your way to the sheriff's office and you see a uh, sign on the door, Sheriff Lucas Buck. Oh, Buck me. All right. Oh, God, no. <laughs> no, literally Buck me. Glory. Yep. Why don't you introduce yourself? The sheriff nope. greets you at the door. Who's All there? Right. Oh, Agents Barker and DeLonge. You are DeLonge. Okay. You're trying to tell me that two FBI agents named after guys from Blink-182 are in my office right now? What a coincidence. I'm pretty sure that, no, I was not named after anyone from something called a Blink-182. I'm an old ass white man. That is the exact demographic. <laughs> Gerald, you rolled a one on your con game. Um, so what? it just happens sometimes. All I um, said was my name. Yeah, and uh, you missed by two points for convincing him that you are who you say you are. So Eric, um, you rolled a little bit better. Why don't you jump in and save this dumpster fire? <laughs> he said my name. Maybe he didn't like how you said it. <laughs> this is a big wide world. Uh, we bump up against coincidences all the time. Uh, just like I can't really choose my partner, can't really choose who's incredulous when they pick up on the coincidence. Um, we're here though because we heard that the people are uh, popping up with their hearts missing. Oh yeah, yeah. Chalked it up to a wild animal attack, even though the farmer said it was a man. Mm -hmm. uh, I gotta say I didn't believe him until he caught the guy on his farm red-handed. Uh, body's down at the morgue if you want me to take you there. Um, in a moment, uh, you do have the suspect here. For yep, he's in lockup. Still. Sick motherfucker though, I gotta tell you. When you responded, um, who was first on the phone? Uh, I was. <laughs> okay. It's pretty much just okay. me. Okay. And, uh, when you got there, um, was the, uh, was the perpetrator covered in blood? Uh... Oh man, all over his hands. Some of it on his shirt. Uh, he was, he was pretty bloody. Mm -hmm. Pretty much the guy caught him, like, literally red-handed. <laughs> okay, um, but we could use that escort to shoot the, uh, the morgue, but, uh, before that I want to have an interview with the, uh, perpetrator before we head down. Okay, sure. He hasn't requested any legal counsel, but you know the drill. If he does, you gotta... Yep. You gotta shut up. Um, he takes you to, a, it's like an old-timey jail cell from a, a western, almost, except the walls are beige instead of, uh, wood. And uh, you've got the guy standing there behind the bars with the big old lock. He's been cleaned up a little bit. He's wearing a jumpsuit. All right, first thing I want to do is uh, I take out a pin, silver. Okay. And I toss it up. <laughs> Flap. Joe, you get hit with a pen. Fuck is your problem? I know that answers one question. You know what, I, I, I would pick it up, but I'm scared I'll, I'll, I'll get another charge or something. Nah, I don't, I don't just, where's my lawyer? Told you. I've been here a goddamn 10 days and I still haven't seen my attorney. I'm telling you, I'm not answering any questions until I have my attorney present. It's been three days. It doesn't help your credibility <laughs> if you do. Yeah, you're right. It doesn't. Does it? Well, if you would like your attorney present, that is your legal right. But then, right it is. being in here for three more days, I, uh, I'm not looking to uh, evict you at the moment. I just want to hear your side of events. I'm going to say it one more time. Like I, like I told Sheriff Bumfuck over there, my son and I, we were, we were just driving along. It was a pile up a few days ago on the interstate. Well, I, I, I decided to t take another route. We were heading to Ohio. I was taking my uh, 
my boy out to a uh, hollow weekend <laughs> now we're at a yeah yeah we we're going to uh took another route stopped at a diner near town here nice lady there she gave us directions you know save some time get around the the mess and uh it's getting dark and one deer jumped out at me i missed him and two more just came out of nowhere and i just there i was i just hit a pole when i came to my son was gone so you know i immediately freaked out of course got out went searching for him I found him and this guy comes out with gunning he's talking about I'm, i shot his wife or did something to his wife i don't know i don't know i don't know why i'm here i don't know that man's wife i don't know the lady at the diner gave me directions i don't understand why i'm here and why you two are talking to me where well, you two should be out there figuring out what the hell is going on what happened to my son all right all right not, not saying anything else so, do you disagree with the fact that you were found covered in blood? No, I found him. I, he was my boy. I'm going to pick him up. He was, what do you expect me to do in this situation? Just sit there and just stare and look? Of course, I, 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 I tried to, I didn't know what was happening. Yeah, I, t- I touched him. I touched him. I will uh, have a word with the uh, sheriff and see if you can get, uh, get your attorney to uh, represent. If I ever did this to my son, that's what you can do. That is our intention. I picked up the pen and I throw it back at him. Don't need that for sure. Hmm. Catch it and put it in a deck of pocket. 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 Well, that was informative. Yeah, two of your agents are already here. Um, I don't know why this is such a big deal for the FBI. <laughs> Aren't you a little bit young Crap. to be in the FBI? All right, let's go find out what that is immediately before they ask too many questions. Yep. I mean, do you have somebody I can call? And, of course uh, I have someone you can call. Well... I'm waiting. Say, so, uh, what, 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 what we got going on here? Let me find their phone number because it's not like I have it Jen? Carter. Hey, agent Carter. Carter. This is Agent Delange. This is my partner, Agent Barker. Pull out uh, my phone, and uh, it's a flip phone, so it doesn't seem very authoritative. <laughs> and I just like oh push God, them. What is that? That is my phone. Oh, uh, yep, yep, right there. Yep. Supervisor did send a text over. We're gonna have backup. Our right, agent Carter. Yep, there we are. There you go. I'm pretty sure I can spot a non-agent from a real agent, especially when they are acting like this. Especially when they're 12 years old. Yeah, especially when they're 12 years old. Yeah. No, this is this is fine, Sheriff. Like Sorry. I as as an FBI agent. <laughs> right, and you're like 20 something. Yeah, she's obviously uh, not an agent, but uh, she's doing the whole flip badge. I'm an agent, do what I say type thing. Yeah, they said they'd be sending us agent junior grade we're gonna put them through the paces on this one i guess yeah why don't you uh take agent carter and uh, catch her up well the sheriff yeah. is buying it how are you handling this moment of hu- humiliation agent carter yeah you just glaring at me yeah let's oh, yeah. step outside agent i'll catch you up yeah yeah let's step outside we Go step outside, outside. what the hell do you think you're doing what the hell do you think you're doing what? Where'd you get that suit? Up, old man. Yeah, and I'm old enough to have the job I say I have. What, you have like 12 or something? You look at... You're all the same. We have this handle. Yeah. Unfortunately, you'll have yeah, to take around with us a little bit. Yeah, I'm sure. Who are you? I told you, Agent Carter. Yeah, and I'm Agent Delange. Yep. I'm gonna go talk to, um... We've already talked to him. We just did, and it would be suspicious if you went in there to do a follow-up after we have already spoken to him. Fine. All right. The man in the cell uh, insists, of course, he's innocent. He's already passed the silver test. So he's not a werewolf. Okay. And I just stare to make sure that I have this hunter gauged correctly. Megan is pretty much covered in tattoos that she can cover up. And most of it is notes on hunting. Okay. Because she doesn't remember any of it. Pretty much, she's got the anti-possession tattoo. She's got the devil's trap, how to draw it. She has a handful of how to kill various things, like the standards, the werewolf, the vampire. Oddly enough, a Rougarou. Nothing like too out there and crazy. It's all very part and parcel, common knowledge kind of stuff. Most of it's in her own shorthand, so a lot of it just looks like chicken scratch. One of the victims, and the only victim I had listed in my notes, was a woman, which I'm assuming is the farmer's wife that he mentioned. There was also a child victim. I haven't, it's the first I've heard of it. The insist was his son, but we are thinking werewolf. So we'll just wait out here until he joins us. And if you're smart, You'll follow our lead and not muck this up for us. Or better yet, go home. Uh, no. I'm here. Mostly I just keep an eye on this child until my partner comes back outside, since I think I have them in hand. You? Pacing. Angrily. <laughs> Very angrily. Rocks are kicked. <laughs> kick, kick, kick rocks. Kick rocks. 
<laughs> uh, I was gonna talk to the uh, sheriff one more time before I exited the building. I got the perpetrator to go over his, uh, his version of events and he officially requested an attorney. So if you can get on that and uh, we're gonna go ahead and head over to the morgue. If you give a call ahead to let them know that uh, to expect us. So we're not just popping in on them. And uh, I give them our card as well. If anything else comes up, just uh, feel free to reach out to us. I head out. Okay. The sheriff is willing to take you to the bodies when everyone's ready. And I'm assuming that's that's what's happening right now? Yep. Okay. You are taken to the body. And it's actually a couple of bodies that are covered with sheets. It's a small town. It's pretty much where they put bodies while they're waiting for them to get buried. It's a combination of a lot of things. There is no medical examiner's office for for this town. It's just too small. So there's no medical examiner. They call in people when they need autopsies done uh, to find cause of death. So you're in a room with uh, the sheriff. His name is Lucas Buck. And he says, there you go. I'll be upstairs if you need anything. Wait, we well out of earshot. <laughs> So, who exactly the fuck is this? I'm just not exactly sure. Amy so Carter, remember? All right, let's take a look at these bodies. I'm in the simmer way the fuck down. <laughs> no, sheet. Holy shit. Okay, what you see is two bodies. Imagine something that has been shredded to hamburger. It almost looks like somebody put their fist into the rib cage, made a fist.